Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Tuesday to you and yours. I'm so sorry I wasn't here to say happy Monday to you yesterday. Uh, but today, uh, we will do our best to have a terrific, terrific show. And, and normally, I sit here very confident, like, we're going to have a great show. I'm not confident today, not because I haven't prepared. It's because I'm a little unsure if I've chosen the right topic. And, and so I'm going to do my best. It's what my gut tells me to do in terms of topic. But I, I have to admit, I'm not a thousand percent sure. Should I talk about uh, what has gone on with me in the last 24 36 hours and why I'm frustrated and why I wasn't here on Monday or should I just let it go have it go unexplained not make too much of it and just move on to what's going on in the world there's a state of a union address tonight with Joe Biden there's things going on in the sports world that I wanted to talk about yesterday should I just talk about them today and pretend like nothing has happened I, I, I've chosen the direction I'm going because I do think it's going to be edifying uh, for you and I think I can package it in a way that it has a larger point about what's going on in American society so I, I'm going to ask for some patience from you as I unpack all of this, I don't know how much time I'm going to need to unpack it. I plan to uh, get to Delano in the second half of the show, let him contribute to the conversation that I'm going to unpack here at the beginning of the show. But I feel good about it, but I'm not a thousand percent confident. I'm just, I'm just caught in the middle. I could just move on or I could walk you through what has happened and why I'm frustrated and how I think it relates to everything that's going on with men and the world and modern culture. And so I'm gonna do that, but I wanna start by saying I was out of town. I was down in Florida and when I got back last night and when I finally climbed into bed around 9, 30, 10 o'clock last night, I was reminded once again, having just slept in a hotel, very nice hotel down in Florida, I was reminded again why I love Cozy Earth. There was a difference between the sheets I slept on in a nice that's a four and a half star hotel, it's a Westin down in Florida. It's a nice hotel, nice bed, nice bedding, the whole nine yards. But was it as good as what I have at home with my Cozy Earth sheets? No, it wasn't. Listen, I, I, I'm, these cozy earth temperature controlled sheets make a difference. That's why it's an authentic recommendation that I'm giving you. I can tell the difference. I slept. It's not just my bed. Look, I got good mattresses and the whole nine yards. It's these sheets. They're absolutely incredible. Cozy Earth customers have pinned over 5,000 well-earned, 5,000 well-earned five-star reviews on their website. It's because they deserve it. Cozy Earth bedding is temperature regulating. Now you can sleep more comfortably year-round. I sure do. I certainly did last night. Whether it's their luxury seats available in five awesome colors, loungewear, pajamas, or premium waffle bath towels. You'll love shopping at Cozy Earth. Hurry, save 35% on Cozy Earth bedding right now. Go to CozyEarth.com slash fearless, enter my promo code fearless at checkout, and save 35%. That's CozyEarth.com slash fearless. Can't get any more authentic than that. I just was able to tell the difference when I got home from Florida, got into my bed. <laughs> this is why I appreciate these guys from Cozy Earth. Fantastic job. All right, so <clears throat> let me begin the unpacking of, and, and I'm, I'm confident you're going to enjoy 
and see the benefits of this conversation because I want I, I'm very frustrated. Yesterday was a very big day in the sports world between Kyrie Irving and demanding a trade and being traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Great topic to discuss. You should go. Should go. I've written a column about Kyrie on the Blaze and talking about how Kyrie's freedom frustrates, annoys, uh, bothers all these people in corporate media that know they're enslaved and they're not as free as Kyrie Irving. And so I, I've written a column all about it. Love to have unpacked all of this yesterday. It's a great topic. The John Morant situation, another awesome, fantastic topic that we could have got into yesterday. I don't know if you guys are fully aware, but or surely, because the media didn't make as big a deal of this as they could have, in my opinion. But Ja Morant and someone in his traveling party or whatever, the Indiana Pacers uh, felt like they were threatened and that someone in their traveling party, someone in Ja Morant's car, friends, otherwise, pointed a razor lead dot, red dot, into their car. Would have loved to talk about that and what's going on with the Memphis Grizzlies and the Grizzlies and all their players, including John Morant, taking on the mentality of Memphis. Would have loved to have talked about that. Would have loved yesterday to have talked about the Grammy Awards and how satanic they were Sunday night on CBS. Perfect topic to illustrate and hammer home my point that this whole music industry is satanic. All of it. And the Grammys put that in everybody's face Sunday night. Would have been an awesome topic for us on this show on Monday. But I couldn't do it because I was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. At the behest and the request of a man named Patrick Bet David. Patrick Bet David has a company called Valuetainment. For those of you that are unaware, he's very popular over YouTube. Many of you. When you hear me say the name Value Tainment and Patrick Beck David, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Some of you may not, though, because, again, YouTube, you can have a massive audience on YouTube, but there could be a whole segment of people in the YouTube world that have no idea that you even exist. But Value Tainment has 4 million YouTube subscribers. Patrick Beck David has interviewed Kobe Bryant to Jordan Peterson to Andrew Tate to... Neil deGrasse Tyson. Andrew Tate has interviewed some of everybody. He's popular. and he, He's basically uh, a knockoff or the conservative version of Joe Rogan. Not as popular as Joe Rogan, but really popular and really popular interviewing uh, conservative people. And, and just anybody he can. I'm sure he'd like to interview anybody, but his, his values... Uh, tend to line up more with conservatives. Uh, he, may, he became really popular, uh, quite honestly. He, he started interviewing mobsters, like mean, real, Sammy the Bull Gravano and real life mobsters, and that made him popular. And then he started develop, enhancing his brand by talking to high profile conservatives like Jordan Peterson. Uh, you know, he, I think he interviewed Kobe four or five years ago. That's still up prominently on the Valuetainment uh, YouTube page. But in mid-December, uh, a guy that works there, head of talent relations, uh, wrote me an email asking me if I would be interested in uh, appearing on, on uh, Patrick Bet David's Valuetainment podcast. And I sent back, hey, what do you want to interview me about? Or what would you like, because it was the, the Fearless podcast, and I say, hey, what do you want to interview Whitlock about? Or what, I can't remember if I said me or them. I know exactly what they wrote back to me, and I'll, I'll read it to you. Thanks for getting back to me. The interview would cover Jason's career with ESPN and The Blaze, his show Fearless with Jason Whitlock, as well as current events, trending topics, and stories in the news. A full list of topics would be provided to Jason prior to the interview for his review. If possible, 
We'd like to see if Jason's available for an in-person interview from our Fort Lauderdale, Florida studios sometime in 2023. Uh, Valuetainment will provide round trip airfare, hotel, ground transportation. Please let me know if there's any additional information I can provide. Thanks for your time and consideration. Signed, Robert Gargulio, I think, uh, head of talent relations. That's in mid December. Me and Robert go back and forth over email throughout parts of December, January, and and Finally, you know, because it's very hard during football season, I don't really like to travel. I like to be here, do this show. I take this show, obviously, very importantly. It's, it's my life's work and mission at the moment. It's something fearless. It's something this audience is very important to me. And Mondays, quite honestly, during football season are, are clearly our most popular shows. People love to see me, Steve Kim, and Jason Brown talk football. Mondays are a big deal. I agreed to do it this past Monday, yesterday, because there's no NFL game. There's a week off between the Super Bowl and the conference championships. There's a week of, of delay before the Super Bowl kicks off. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to talk about a flag football Pro Bowl game with you know Steve Kim and these guys. And so this Monday might be the perfect opportunity for me to get away, do an interview with Patrick Bet David. It'll be great uh, marketing for this show, good platform for me to talk about what we're trying to do with this show. Patrick De Bet David, based on his history and all the people he's interviewed and the interviews I've seen, he's very respectful. He'll ask tough questions, he'll ask great questions chance to, you know, he'll give you two, two and a half hours. Again, it's like the, the conservative version of Joe Rogan. I was like, no problem. This month, it works in my schedule. Let's do it. So I fly down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to do this interview. My flights are all delayed on Sunday through no fault of anybody other than these airlines are a hot mess. I don't get in until late Sunday night when I was supposed to get there early Sunday afternoon. Wake up the next day to uh, do the interview. I think it's scheduled at 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. Yeah, Eastern time. Get, arrive at the studio at 8.45, sitting in a green room, and Patrick Beck David walks into the green room that I'm waiting in and, and strikes up some small talk and I'm sitting there. You go down there and the Valuetainment studios and building and office spaces are really impressive. According to the internet, Patrick Beck David has made a ton of money, I think in the insurance industry and other industries. Internet says he's worth $200 million by the looks of his office space and the number of employees at this value attainment, that looks accurate. Looks like, to me, it looked like they had 50, 75, maybe employees based on the office space and, and what I could see. Guy may have 50 employees working for him. Uh, it's certainly an impressive set of offices and, and studio space. I t when he walks in my green room, I was like, hey man, I enjoy what you do, I have respect for it, I wasn't expecting all of this, this is really impressive, and he makes small talk telling me how, you know, he's followed my work and how he respects what I do, and then he says to me, hey, uh, what's your take on Roland Martin? And I, you know, I go Scooby-Doo on him, huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, and, and I go, well, you know, he's a stalker of mine, he's a, troll uh, of mine over social media, but you know, I, I don't think much of him. I don't think he's a serious person. And, and then Patrick Big David asked me another question about Roland and, and, and I really, huh? Huh? What, what, what's, what's, what's going on? And then he drops, he goes, what do you think about debating Roland Martin? And I go, why would I debate Roland Martin? What's this about? Well, you know, uh, you know, I just, I just like to have both sides and blah, blah, blah. And, and I go, Roland Martin, I go, he's a troll. He's not a serious person. He, he's not interested in 
uh, sincere engagement. And I go, that's someone I muted over social media four or five years ago. Just cause he's been trolling me. And I go, and four or five years ago, I had the guy, he, he wanted an interview. I gave him an interview, invited him to my home in Los Angeles, sat down with him for two hours in an interview. And, and uh, the interview was disingenuous and a waste of my time. Roland Martin isn't interested in an exchange of ideas. He just talks and talks and talks and, and throws out accusations. And, and if, a, if a question's not going or a conversation isn't going the direction he wants, he just switches topics. I go, mostly the interview was me listening to Roland Martin talk. He's just not interested in sincere engagement. It's all a shtick. He, he, he wants internet, he wants social media fame. He wants clips he can put out that distort the conversation and, and to hype himself up. Well, the guy's a troll. I, you know, I, I don't have an interest. Uh, well, you know, uh, we wanted to have you and Roland on a panel discussion. And I go, a panel discussion? That's not what I remember you guys suggesting to me. And, and, and he circled back again. Patrick Big David did circle back again, asking me to do a debate with Roland Martin. And he, you know, he tells me that, you know, look, it would be great. You know, you, you'd have a moderator. I would be the moderator and I would be on your side. And, and I was like, I don't need anybody on my side and, and because I don't have an interest in debating someone like Roland Martin, he's a troll, he's not a serious person. And, and so then after about 10 minutes, Patrick Ben David pivots to, okay, well, uh, we'll interview you first and then we'll have Roland Martin come on to be interviewed. And, and, and he, Patrick Bay David walks away and goes off wherever he's going to his office or talk to his producers. And I sit down in the green room and try to collect. I was like, what did I agree to? Because I want to live up to my word. Uh, what did I agree to? And I couldn't remember off the top of my head. And so I hunted down the email, I, I, I hunted down the email to make, to refresh my memory of what it is I agreed to and what they requested. And what they requested is what I, I read you in that email. The interview would cover Jason's career with ESPN and The Blaze, his show with Fearless, Fearless with Jason Willard, as well as current events, trending topics, and stories in the news. A full list of topics would be provided to Jason prior to the interview for his review. And so once I re-familiarized myself with what I had agreed to, I said, okay, I'm out of here. And I got up, walked out of the green room, walked out the door, and started walking to a UPS store that was across the street, or this shop, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's not a shopping mall, a strip mall. There's a strip mall across the street, and I started walking to this strip mall across the street because I'm going to call an Uber and take a ride back to my hotel. And so I probably get 50 yards, 75 yards on my walk away out of the valuetainment business, and I hear this producer, Jason, Jason, <laughs> and I just keep walking because I got nothing to say to these guys. I just keep walking. Then maybe three, five seconds later, I hear... Patrick Bet David, Jason, Jason. And I just keep walking because I don't have anything to say to these guys. That I've, I've taken time out of my schedule to come down to Florida. I didn't ask, no one was paying me. No, no one was paying me. There was, I had taken time out of my schedule and taken time away from my own show. And again, I thought the interview would be good for me to sit down with an interviewer who could probe me and I could explain what we're doing here at Fearless and what I'm doing with my career to a different audience. So th there was some benefit. I wasn't down here handing out charity, but I also wasn't looking for anything. And certainly if they had told me that, hey Jason, we want to put you in a debate with a clown 
who you've already debated, who's not interested in uh, a legitimate conversation, I wouldn't be utilizing my time this way. I wouldn't take away from the product that I owe you to go debate a clown. Th this, it doesn't advance what I'm doing in any way. And so Patrick McDavid races and catches me at a stop sign, a stoplight, because I'm waiting for the light to turn red and get the sign that I can cross the street. I'm stopped there, he catches me, and we, he starts telling me that, hey, you know, hey man, look, just come back and we'll just do a separate interview with you and it won't have anything to do with Roland Martin. And, and I'm like, why would I believe you? <laughs> I don't know you, I just, I just met you, but the foundation of what we're starting here is based on a lie and based on you talking me into flying to Florida and abandoning my own show based on a lie. Why would I do that? And he kept making his case, and eventually I said, hey man, I'm a 55-year-old man. I don't have this kind of time to waste. I go, you're, according to everything I've read and your whole brand, you're a businessman. Surely you understand that I'm in business with the blaze and that I accept and get a significant sum of money for doing a show in conjunction with the blaze. And you just talked me up on a lie into abandoning my responsibilities and my partnership with the blaze to do something for you that it just doesn't make sense. And I go, you're a businessman. Surely you can understand. This is not sound business. What you just did and what you just provoked me into doing. And, and he's, I don't say, he, I don't think he ever apologized, but he seemed to acknowledge that. And this, hey, then he started telling me, what's your speaking fee? What, what do you get for speaking? I'll pay you whatever it is. And it's a total misread and miscalculation of me. And I, I don't expect him to be an expert on Jason Whitlock, but if you're, if you're authentically inviting someone down to basically do a two hour interview, you would think you'd do some research. And, and if you do any research, any adult, objective, mature, uh, I'm, research of me is like, you're not going to lie to me and then fix it with money. You, you, you're not, I'm really, really old school. If any, I, I don't care if you hate me or you can hate my guts, you can be totally bought into the rig job against me that I'm a terrible person. But there's no evidence, there's no proof that I have a tolerance for people lying to me. It would be just the opposite. If someone lies to me, oh yeah, I'm gonna invest this much in this project, and uh, oh, now I'm not gonna do it, and, and uh, no one's gonna tell me about it. My history's littered with this, recent history. I don't like being lied to and I take a man very seriously at his word and there's no amount of money that fixes that. There's no, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not that guy because that's how seriously I take my word. When, when I give you my word, death, illness, being held hostage, it's gonna take something catastrophic for me not to live up to my word. And then if I don't live up to my word, I'm going to take action to address it, apologize for it, make it good, and, and, and I just take my word very seriously. And so when a man lies to me, it's, 
it's a it's a it's a deal breaker. I, I'm just I'm just I understand misunderstandings. I understand uh, accidental. But but these people lied to me, and I'm going to walk you through how I know they lied to me, and the whole thing was based in dishonesty. I'll walk you through how I know all that. And so there, the guy totally misread, we'll cut you a check. How much, how much do you get for a speech? I have no interest in that. I'm standing in front of a person that lied to me, took me away from my passion project, the thing that I'm most committed to, this whole fearless movement, and then I'm, sta I'm standing in front of a man. Again, if you understand the fearless movement and what I'm trying, we are trying, we're trying to create with this fearless movement is men of honor. Men who take their word very seriously. Men who take their responsibilities very seriously. And so I'm getting the first impression of meeting Patrick Bet David. I'm like, this isn't a serious man. And he's trying to get me in a ring with an even less serious man, Roland Martin. And so I don't say it because I, I, I just, I'm trying to limit my conversation with him because I don't believe in talking to dishonest people because they'll twist the honest and, and turn it into something else. And so I try to limit my engagement with dishonest people because they'll take anything you say. They're like the police. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. And so I, people that have been dishonest with me, they, they, hey, how come Whitlock never returns my calls? Or how come I seem to be blocked on his phone? It's because I don't like to engage with dishonest people. It's too high risk for me. It, they don't take their words seriously. So I'm, I'm very careful about who I deal with in the media. I had to learn that the hard way through being very nice to people, very generous with people, but, but they can twist and they, I'll go back to anybody has ever seen me or heard me or listened to me talk about what happened with me and Deadspin and the Greg Howard guy. That's all. That's all. No good deed goes unpunished. I was very nice to Greg Howard. This guy wrote an article contending that he's in his hospital bed fighting for his life and that I'm on the phone yelling and screaming at him while he's fighting for his life. And, and I have emails from him from when he was in the hospital bed with him thanking me for calling him with concern for he and his family. So again, these people are capable of incredible lies. And so I just, I, my reaction is to limit communication. I don't want to be twisted up in their lives. And, and I'm going to attach all of this to a documentary that I watched over the weekend. Some, a, a viewer of the show emailed me, fearlessblazeshow uh, at gmail.com and recommended that I watch, this was on Friday, I think, or Thursday, recommended, hey, you should watch this uh, documentary, Third Adam Three. And, and third Adam three, the rise of the divine feminine. And it, it talks about the rise of the femi divine feminine energy. And that's what this conversation I want to have with you all today is about divine feminine energy and, and how and the, the documentary is brilliant. And we're going to get into the documentary in depth tomorrow. Spencer Smith that, that put the documentary on, he's going to come to Nashville. Uh, Spencer Smith is a minister and a missionary. He's traveled the world doing missionary work. 
He put this thing together that explains what's going on in global culture and particularly here in American culture. This whole thing, divine feminine energy. The first time I heard divine, and I told Spencer Smith this today when I was talking to him. First time I heard of divine, divine feminine energy, seven, eight years ago, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm watching a video by the guy Chronicles of Judah. And he mentions divine, divine feminine energy. And, and, but he never, when I hear him talk about it 70 years ago, he never went into great detail, or at least that I heard, I never heard him go into great detail, a definition of it. Spencer Smith in this documentary goes two and a half hours and breaks down divine feminine energy so that a baby can understand it. It's a terrific video. And so I've, I've asked uh, Pastor Anthony uh, to watch the, the documentary. I've asked Virgil to watch the documentary. I'd like for those of you at home so you can better enjoy tomorrow's show. I'd love for you to watch this documentary tonight so that when we talk about it tomorrow, you can understand it even better. But everything I'm talking about and gonna talk about today as it relates to Patrick Bet David and to Roland Martin, it's about this divine feminine energy that has overtaken American culture and culture at large around the planet. It's satanic, it's about, and I'm not calling these guys Satanists, I'm saying that they're caught up in a culture that they don't fully understand. And that's why men are no longer men and why men's words don't mean what they used to. They're used to, most men you, took great pride in living up to their word. We've moved completely away from that. A man's word is not his bond. You can't make deals based on handshakes. Men will lie about any and everything, particularly as it relates to money. And so, Patrick Bet David and Roland Martin aren't fully familiar of what culture has caught them up and is emasculating them and making them act like women. And, and this particularly refers to Roland Martin, but even Patrick Bet David, conservative, had a lot of success. He's Iranian. I think he and his family came over here when he was like 10 years. Great success story. I think involved in the American military as best as I can tell. Completely unaware yesterday, like, oh man, you're acting like a woman. Your word don't mean nothing to you. You would trick another grown man into flying down uh, to Florida to do your bidding rather than do it yourself. Now he ended up doing it himself because everything, and, and, and I'll unpack this further uh, as we move along on this show, but everything, what he wanted to do, Patrick Bet David, he wanted to have a debate with Roland Martin, but feeling unsure of himself and feeling unsure that Roland Martin would just play the race card on him, he set up a gotcha moment for Roland and was like, gonna have some pen. Hey, Roland, you're down here to do an interview with me. Voila, Jason Whitlock's here and y'all gonna debate. Cause he didn't, now he ended up, when I walked away, they played, the, I think they went ahead and taped an interview yesterday and Patrick Big David engaged with this clown, Roland Martin, for a couple of hours and they, they played the interview this morning or the debate this morning and he went ahead and did it. But his plan yesterday was to roll out, hey, I got this Negro from uh, Nashville. And, and, and it's like, it, this is all like, he, he thinks he's Django Unchained. And, and I think, wasn't it Leonard DiCaprio? He, he was this uh, guy that set up fights between black slaves. That's what Patrick Bet David thought he was doing. I'm gonna get, with, and he thought he was the good guy. He's, hey, Whitlock, I'm on your side. I know Roland, and again, these aren't his words, but these are his actions. This is what he led me, I'm on your side. We're we gonna beat up Roland Martin together. 
and, and I don't have a real interest in beating up Roland Martin. He's a clown. He beats himself up. He's full of divine feminine energy. His wife is a minister and the head of his household. She's the pastor. She's the spiritual leader in his house. I don't need to clown Roland Martin. He clowns himself. And I certainly don't have time to leave Nashville and to leave my audience that trusts me to deliver content to them and to talk about issues that interest them. I don't need to fly down to Florida to wrestle with a clown like Roland Martin. Roland Martin's wrestling with himself. But I, I just want to help set up a little bit more of the defi divine feminine energy and what Spencer Smith argues in his documentary is that <clears throat> God establishes a natural order for humanity. Christ, man, woman, child. That's the natural order that we talk about on this show most days. And this whole point of view and perspective, our biblical worldview is driven by that. Christ, man, woman, child. That's the cycle. Man submits to Christ, who then, because of his submission to Christ, woman submits to man, children submit to woman, and both parents. But, and keep in mind, I'm not suggesting that any woman should submit to a man who has not submitted to Christ. If you watch this show, you've sat and listened to me talk constantly that although I was a good dude and although I was a believer, I had not submitted to Christ and therefore it would be foolish for any woman to submit to me. I've been very open and honest about that, that I had life all screwed up. Again, a believer, but not willing to submit. So basically it just throws my beliefs out the window and everything we talk about on this show and virtually everything I've been talking about for the last seven years is about, no, I need to submit. I, I got this whole thing screwed up. I got it. the arrogance that I have over the money, popularity, whatever level of fame I have has made me arrogant. And I've forgotten the whole process of submitting to God. I'm completely out of line with the natural order. And so what this documentary argues is that what woman is trying to do, what the devil is trying to do is put man and woman on the same platform. He won't leave God out because once you get out of God's natural order, you're leaving God out. And so I could sit around and I wrote pieces about, and I talked about previously, yeah, I'm a believer in God. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. But, but what did it mean if I wasn't willing to submit? Nothing. If I'm hanging out in strip clubs, what does it mean? Nothing. But, so they're trying to say the woman is, and this whole feminist movement, don't worry about submitting to God. Me and you will partner up, we'll be in balance, and we'll set this whole world ablaze. We'll, we'll create the greatest thing in the world, just man and woman, any, any quality. And that's why we, that cartoon is the two-headed goddess, I think of Agni or whatever. God, and it's a man and woman's head, sharing power. It's not what God intended. It's the, it's the representation of divine feminine energy. We just put woman on the same platform as man. Oh, how great things are going to be. I want to stop for one moment. I'm going to get back to it. I want to talk about uh, my good friends at Patriot Mobile. Thanks to your support, Patriot Mobile has emerged as one of the leaders in the parallel economy. And they have big news. Patriot Mobile now offers service with all three 
major networks. This means if you're with the big three and like the service but hate their values, you can access them with Patriot Mobile. They also offer a performance guarantee. If you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch between the three major carriers for free. Patriot Mobile America's only Christian conservative wireless provider offers nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks. So you get the same great service while supporting a company that fights to preserve our God-given rights and freedoms. This new year, resolve to stop supporting companies that don't align with your values. Patriot Mobile's 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching easy. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Jason or call them at 878-PATRIOT. Get free activation today with the offer code Jason. That's patriotmobile.com slash Jason or call 878-PATRIOT. Do that today. You guys got to support the companies that support us. Let me flip back. I want to play you a clip from the wrestling match that went on to, on Valuetainment's show today between Patrick Bet David and Roland Martin. Let's play the clip. Roland, if you would have answered any of my questions, oh my God. if you would have answered oh my any God. of my questions I in the last question, hour and a half. You don't like the answer. No, it's not I don't like the answer. You don't like the you, answer. You, you say, tell me the policies. I'm asking you the policies. Oh, so so you I'm, don't, I'm asking, so, I, so I can't ask, can't ask you a question. Oh, you, you can't give an answer. You can, but I would like. I brought you here. As, invite me on your show, and I'll give you the answer. No, no, because I'm the guest. Wait, wait, wait. I wait brought you on the you show. Well, first of all, even on my show, if somebody asks me a question, hell, I answer the question. I've answered your questions. You still can't answer it. And the reason you know why you can't answer. We've been an hour and twenty minutes you now. You still answer. haven't answered the question. Actually, I have. You have here's, not. Actually, I have. What here's, policy? Here's why you haven't answered. You blame the state. No, no. You no, blame surrounding no, cities. No. You blame Republicans. That's what you blame. No, no. For fifty and. I, and I tell I'm you, stating, for 59 I'm, years. I, and first of all, systemic racism is a policy because it's actually ingrained in our system. That's first. What I'm also saying to you is what I recognize is how do we fix these, again, institutional, how do we? long range issues? How do we fix them? First and foremost, first and foremost, yeah. we got to stop denying that actually it's a problem. Which you have done. Oh, no. That's first. I just showed you it the is a problem. No, 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 27 no, no. out of 30. No, no. It is a no, problem. We've got to stop. It's a big we problem. we got to stop denying the 59 reality. years Democrats gotta, have had no. the vote. You and sat here not, and they're... denied the systemic reality of racism in the housing appraisal industry by going, I need to see the 47 million. You just denied it. And I'm One million percent I need to see the data. And I One million through. percent I need to, I need to see the data. Here's the deal. And by the way, you're giving Here's a little too much credibility to New York Times. Here's the So... Here's what I'll give Patrick David, Bet David, credit for. He tried to rope me in. I refused and said and told him, like, it's a waste of time, man. This guy's not an honest broker. You're not going to have a productive conversation for him. I didn't know what Patrick Bet David was going to do, but he, he had probably hoodwinked Roland into town under false pretenses as well. I, I, I don't know if Roland was in on, uh, you know, trying to bait me into a debate. I, I don't know. I can only speculate about that. But I'll give Patrick back that. He, without me, he went ahead and had the debate and had the discussion, stood on his own two feet, and found out just how unproductive it is to try to have a conversation with Roland Martin. Because Roland Martin has been trained well, He's an asset. He's a puppet of the Democrat Party and the whole uh, surveillance state, the whole uh, investigative branches of U.S. government or whatever. He's been trained in how to deflect, distract, uh, filibuster, talk, never engage, never get pinned down. And, and I went through it myself four years ago when I invited the man to my home, sat down with him for two hours and just watched him deflect. I want to play a clip, just an excerpt from when the guy came to me in LA and I, I made some of the same allegations and, and accusations that I, I, and again, that's not, I want that doesn't describe, but let's just play the clip of Roland and me. Uh, for, it's just a short one, but it's very consistent with the same message I have about Roland today. A lot of media people are a slave to your Twitter feed. How? 
Hell, Roland, you've tweeted like 200,000 times. Okay. Everything. Do, I've seen do, 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 do you know what you do, do you know, do you know what slaves to their no, Twitter No, no, first, first, it's not a, not a, first it's all, not a platform for us. First of all, it's, it's not a slave slave uh, to it. What it is, is, is a communications medium. Okay? Now, as somebody, again, who's actually run three black newspapers, who's been new editor of a black magazine, who's run a black website, who understands how to communicate with folks, it is a medium. So you operate in this well, you're a slave to it. No, I understand what it is. If you have the capacity, let's also, if you really want to expand this, when you're African American who's run a black newspaper, you might have a circulation of 20,000, but yes, you build a following, you could actually reach more people on such a platform, and it goes beyond just your traditional following. So that's not a slave, that's knowing how to use it. Now, that's an idiot, uh, Roland, and it, it, it's, it's someone who talks too much and tweets too much. And this is why I keep talking about the divine feminine energy. And this is what I've said about Roland for a long time. And it was funny going back and looking at some clips from four or five years ago when I sat down with Roland, I was like, yeah, I was saying the same thing then that I, I believe and say now. Roland, for a grown man, to have at that time for 200,000 tweets. Now Roland's up to 623,000 tweets. And, and, and I'm just connecting this to the, everything we're trying to accomplish with Fearless is about waking up men to like, hey, you're out of line with what God intends. And so here's the significance of 623,000 tweets. The guy joined Twitter, I believe in 2008. 620 some odd thousand tweets is someone tweeting more than 100 times a day for, is that, if you join it for, for 15, 14 years. 120 tweets a day. I've always said for more than 20 years. I, I've tried, I've told young people and I've told people that are off put by my personality when they meet me in person. People see me on TV, hear me on the radio. Those jobs require me to talk. In person, I tend to come off as an introvert and a shy person. I'm not shy. I'm not really an introvert. I just don't believe in talking all the time. I've said to people for more than 20 years, maybe 30, I can't remember when I first started saying it like, hey man, we have one mouth, two eyes, and two ears because God had a plan for people. Do four times as much listening and observing, listening and observing, than talking. That's why he gave you two ears. He could have given you two mouths. He could have put a mouth here, a mouth in the back of your head, so you could just carry on two, and th could have put mouths on the side. So you could carry on multiple conversations with all kinds of people. But he didn't do that because he intended for us to do more listening and observing than talking. But when you come out from underneath God's order, his instructions, submission to him, you sound like Roland Martin in every environment. Roland Martin wants to talk and tweet constantly. He comes across, I'm not, ladies, I, I, I don't wanna be offensive, but I'm just keeping it real. He comes off like a woman, an overweight woman with long fingernails who thinks the more she talks, the less you can see how hideous she looks in that little bitty tiny dress covering up her 300 pounds and those eight inch nails she has. That's Roland Martin. He's Lizzo with three miles. And, and here's what the Bible says. You don't have to take my word for it. We'll go to James 119. 
Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Let's go to Proverbs 13, 3. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. We're designed as human beings and then as partic particularly men to be more reflective, more reserved, more interested in saying very few things that have a large impact rather than many things and coming off as flighty and scatterbrained. That's Roland Martin. And I tried to, I didn't go into this kind of detail because again, I don't trust Patrick Bet David. I've met him based on a lie. And, and so I'm very reluctant to engage with those people because I don't know how they'll twist things. But what I was trying to tell him is like, Hey man, you're about to wrestle with a woman who's going to over talk you, get emotional, shout at you. And, and any time you try to have a specific conversation, he's going to switch the subject on you. And that's what happened over the course of their two hour interview. I watched enough of it. I didn't watch all of it, but I watched enough of it to see. Yep. Yep. This is Roland Martin. He, he any Patrick Bay David would bring up a topic. Roland Martin would tell some personal story. I think he started off talking about an exchange between he and his kindergarten teacher or whatever. And, and, and th at one point I saw him talk. He talks about all these obscure news stories and, and things that only he could know. And you have to trust his word that that's how it happened. And that's how it played out. He never wants to talk about facts. He wants to talk about a narrative that he creates and he's in control of. And then that way he gets to define the terms. And Patrick Beck David was like, hey, man, you're on my show. Answer my questions. If I come on your show, I'll answer your questions. Roland has no interest in that. He's always going to deflect and move to something, some narrative that he controls. He's not into logic and reason and fact. He's part of the divine feminine energy. He's into feelings. And Patrick Beck Davis either greedy and just wants the friction of a controversial interview and, and, and had me misread about who I am. You're not going to fly me somewhere to fight your fight, a fight that I have no interest in, a fight that's a waste of my time. I was livid yesterday. It's very robotic in my interaction and engagement with these people because again, I don't give energy to liars and dishonest people. And so I just went straight robot on them. And I'm telling you, as a man, that's how you handle these emotional, lying, dishonest people. Go robot on them. Don't meet their energy. Don't give them the energy they're giving you. Someone meets me with dishonesty, I meet them with silence and limited engagement. I don't meet them with lies. Someone gets emotional. I don't meet them with emotion. I go robot. That's how you handle dishonest people. That's how you handle people so far removed from the order of God. So disinterested in truth. They're dangerous. They're trolls. They want to suck you in to their BS. Patrick Bet David got sucked in and he probably I haven't monitored. Maybe he's getting good views off of that exchange he had with Roland Martin. And he, hey, he brought the other side on and he debated them and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's a good look. Maybe it'll drive a lot of traffic. I'm not interested in it. There's no one that has come on this show, I believe, and you guys fact check me if I'm wrong and I will correct if I am wrong. 
But there's no one that's come on this show. And there have been people I disagree with, people that I thought were talking straight lunacy. I'm not cutting them off. I'm not over talking them. I'm not trying to embarrass them. I'm treating them with respect. I'm giving them room to get their point of view out and, 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 and let them do their thing. Roland Martin has no interest in that. He, he's an asset for the global establishment. He, he's, he's there to discredit any person, but particularly any black person who suggests that, hey man, all this emotional energy, all this divine feminine energy that you're giving into is wrong and will lead to your demise. Roland Martin is a plant for the Democratic Party and the global establishment. The, the man runs around like he's the blackest, uh, most masculine man in, in, in the social media stratosphere. Let, let, this is what Roland Martin is. Let's play the clip of him doing a jig for Hillary Clinton. Let, let, let's, let's play that clip. This is who Roland Martin is. That's how I told y'all need the music. Don't, don't let the ass kind of fool you. So just think for a second. Roland Martin's in a clip with me uh, four years ago. I'm a journalist. I've run this black website. I've run that black website. I've done this. I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. Show me a journalist who's tap dancing for Hillary Clinton a white politician. Do, do you know any journalists that are on tape tap dancing for a political figure? And, and he, he said, I watched part of it with the Patrick Bet David where he, he's trying to pretend like, oh yeah, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I, I, I'm, I'm on neither side. I'm a journalist. He, he told Patrick Beck David this. And I'm like, this man was involved in leaking debate questions to Hillary Clinton. You're, Donna Brazil got in that jam up where she was giving the debate questions to Hillary Clinton. You know who gave them to Donna Brazil? Roland Martin. But he's a journalist. This dude is tap dancing for Hillary Clinton and the Democrat Party. And Patrick McDavid wants, I don't have time for, this dude has exposed himself. I'm gonna go a cut deeper and, and just the whole natural order and just how out of line and how out of pocket he is. His wife is an ordained minister. She's the spiritual leader in their family while Roland sits on Twitter all day tweeting and, and posting propaganda on Facebook and YouTube and just constantly, just constantly just running his mouth. If he's not running his mouth, he's tweeting. It's just constant drivel. Coming. He takes no time for reflection or thought. It's just constantly running his mouth. His wife is a spiritual leader in her home. And this is how weak she is. She let this clown tweet out a joke about David Beckham well, four years ago. I can't do one of these World Cups or there was some commercial with David Beckham and Roland tweeted out a joke talking about, you know, anybody that's excited about David Beckham in their underwear needs to be slapped. Harmless joke over Twitter. Anybody with a brain knows what's happening. But when that alphabet mafia told Roland, dance, Nick, dance. What did he do? He danced. You bet, when CNN apologized, uh, uh, suspended him for the tweet, that was nothing. And the Alphabet Mafia, the LGBTQ, glad, came in and told this Negro to dance. What did he do? He danced. 
went on his show and apologized. What did he do? Ironically, I have historically supported many other issues important to GLAD's agenda, such as ending don't ask, don't tell policies, gay adoption, and including gays in hate crime laws. These folks are facts. His wife's an ordained minister. Roland calls himself a Christian. But I support gay adoption. These are clowns. Roland's a clown. Roland stands for nothing. This is why I was so bothered. Like They really snatched my time away from this show, away from this audience, away from this conversation to wrestle with this clown who stands for nothing, who acts like Lizzo. I want to re-engage with that. I'm going to fly to Florida to wrestle with Lizzo. Not happening. And, and, and Patrick, bet David, you owe me a sincere apology. You need to man up and offer a sincere apology. Because this was some clown, feminine stuff you pulled involving. I, I, I want to take, l- let me, let me, I'm going to walk you through here in a second why I know this whole thing was a setup. But before I do that, I want to take care of <clears throat> my great friends at Preborn. Uh, let me take a moment to be straight with you. You guys are heroes. The donations you're giving to Preborn, they're working. Preborn saves lives. Right now, these babies are taking their first breath. Your impact reached eternity, and we've only just begun because babies need our help. See. The overturning of Roe v. Wade only made them more ravenous for blood of the innocent. So now we need to be more ravenous to save lives. Thanks to Preborn Pregnancy Network, we can do that. For just $28, you can introduce at-risk babies to their mother, the cost of a dinner to save a life. Once she sees that precious life and hears that heartbeat on ultrasound, she is twice as likely to choose life, and because of you, she can. Preborn has rescued over 200,000 babies from abortion, and every day their clinics save 150 babies. You can be a hero by giving a baby life. To donate, just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. 100% of your donation will go to saving babies. One ultrasound is just $28, less than most dinners. Get involved today. That's pound 250, keyword baby or donate securely at preborn.com slash Jason. That's preborn.com slash Jason. You guys know how I feel about preborn. We are heroes. Keep those emails coming to me at fearlessblazeshow.com. I get all of them, any of them that have preborn in, in the subject line. They're one of the first emails I read. Keep them coming. Love what you guys are doing. So <clears throat> let me walk you through why I know this was a setup. So, and, and why Patrick Bet David had an opportunity to be honest with me, but chose dishonesty. So, I fly down Sunday night, and, and, and Sunday night, I look at the Valuetainment uh, YouTube page, and on it, I see some uh, reference to emergency podcast about criminal justice reform or something along those lines. And, 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 and it says it's going to start at 9 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. Whatever, whatever time it said, it was the time that I was like, hold on, that's when my podcast with uh, uh, Patrick Ben David is. Hmm, that's odd. And th- then I thought, well, maybe he recorded that and he's gonna run that on his podcast, and I'll be on the Valuetainment channel. Or I, I just thought it was odd, but I, I didn't think much of it. I was like, well, that, that surely doesn't have anything to do with his interview of me. That was the first thing that raised my eyebrows. 
I wake up the, the next morning and uh, the car service driver, it's the same one that took me to the wrong hotel the night before, he uh, sends me a text saying that, uh, hey, something about picking me up at 9 a.m. or 8.45 a.m. And I'm like, well, the, the thing starts at 9 a.m. And, and, you know, how could he pick me up at that time? And so I'm downstairs, like the email says, pick up at 8.30 a.m. I'm down, and I text him, hey, I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm downstairs, and he says, hey, give me one minute. He pulls around, picks me up, and he takes me on a 15-minute drive to the studio. And during this drive, a producer calls him, and the producer's on speakerphone, and he says to the driver that, uh, hey, uh, don't bring Jason to the front. Bring him around to the back entrance. We want him to come in through there. And the guy says, okay. Or first thing he said is Jason's in the car with me. And, and so I think that was letting the guy know that he could hear me, that, uh, that, that I could hear him. And then, he's, and then the guy tells him, hey, bring him around to the back. We don't want him to come in through the front. Guy says, okay. So we, we come along come in through the back entrance. Again, at this time, I'm not thinking anything. Just not, no red lights are flashing. But after my conversation with Patrick McDavid, after I walk out, after I, I decide, let me call an Uber and I'm leaving, I call an Uber, comes and picks me up at that UPS store at the strip mall, and <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. The Uber driver takes me back to my hotel and he pulls up and I go, hey man, this ain't my hotel. And he goes, yes it is. I go, this ain't my hotel. My hotel's 15 minutes away. Cause literally he drove me back to my hotel in two minutes. And I'm like, this ain't my hotel. My hotel is 15 minutes away. This is crazy. This is, and then I look out the window and I go, Hold on, this this looks like my hotel. And, and it's like, and it's like, this is my hotel. And I'm going, it was a 15-minute ride that included, I think we got on the highway to get to the studio. And the guy taking me back, I think made two left turns, and I was at my hotel. I could have walked from my hotel to the studio. And so I was like, this doesn't make sense. And I go, oh, these guys were killing time. They called and asked this driver to give him the runaround, and they had me delivered to the back of the offices because clearly there's something they don't want me to see at the front of the offices. And I go, that must be Roland Martin. And then so, I start hunting down, I, I go to social media, I go, I wonder what state Roland Martin is in. Because at that time, I'm thinking, when I was over at the studio, I was like, I wonder if they were having Roland Martin over Skype or whatever. And then I, I discovered through social media, like, well, Roland Martin's down in Florida too. And so they had Roland Martin at the studio and had the driver give me the runaround because they didn't want me to run into Roland Martin at the studio. And so, uh, it, it just like all the lights all start coming. I'm like, oh, this was a setup from where we go, and they were going to all these machinations to keep me and Roland Martin separate from each other. And that's again why I don't know if Roland Martin was in on this at all. I probably right now think he wasn't in on it. That this was something Patrick McDavid and his crew decided they were going to pull off. And and and. Patrick McDavid told me during our, our, his conversation that Roland had no idea I was there. I didn't know whether to believe him or not because, you know, Roland trolls me two or three times a week over Twitter. Again, I've had the guy muted. I, I don't see it, but sometimes when people respond back, I get copied and seeking Roland's handle in it, and I can tell that, oh, Roland must be tweeting about me again. I mean, Roland lives, is dying to, for engagement with me. I, I don't have any interest in engaging with Roland. And so then when I get a ride back 
to Miami International Airport, 30 minutes away. I'm done with uh, uh, valuetainment and the ride that they set up with me. So I call my own Uber. This is around one o'clock Eastern time. And sure enough, the Uber driver shows up immediately within 60 seconds. And it's the same driver that had been taking me around for valuetainment. And I'm like, how, why are you still here? What, what, what is going on? I can't believe it's you. And, and so we get in his car. I get in his car. I'm going to let the guy drive me to the airport or whatever. And, 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 and I go, hey, man, are you involved in this scam that Valuetainment has been playing on me? Is that why you took me on a 15-minute ride to their studio? And the guy admits that, yeah, they, they told me to drive you around and, and, you know, just take your time and kill some time. Don't get him here until a certain time. They told him to do that. And I go, do you know why? And he goes, no, I just, I'm just doing what they asked me to do. And, and I tell him, this, I was like, man, you know, I had this other Uber driver and it's a two minute drive and blah, blah. And, and we go through all of that. And then I say to him, I was like, hey, man, I got to be careful because I don't know how elaborate or, or what Patrick Bay David and Valuetainment are doing. I, I go, but I see you got a camera here. I don't know if there's some kind of candid camera. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but, uh, you know, I got to be careful here. I, I'm not sure what's going on. And this, this, again, where my philosophy serves me well. I don't get in Ubers and want to have long drawn out conversations with the Uber driver. I don't, you know, I'm really reserved and I'm an introvert and aloof when engaging with people I don't know. The, the guy had an innocent explanation for his camera being there. A lot of Uber drivers have cameras there to protect themselves or whatever. But the guy did, he told me stories about his Christian walk and all that. And, and I engaged him a little bit, but uh, it, the conversation seemed like he had done some research on me and was trying to walk me into a conversation or whatever because of this show. But I, I, don't, I just wasn't comfortable with the driver. I was appreciative of the fact that he acknowledged that, you know, that clearly they had instructed him to, to, to give me the runaround. And it, it, it clearly seemed to be, he didn't know this, because I, I don't think he picked up Roland Martin, but I was like, clearly they're trying to keep me away from someone or something they didn't want me to know. And as I started replaying the entire scenario, I can't, and, and I want you guys to chime in on this via email, via the comments over YouTube, comments on Apple. I, I, I would love for you all's take on what happened here. My read, as I've mentioned earlier, is I think that Patrick Bet David isn't a fan of Roland Martin, thinks Roland Martin is a race hustler and race baiter, wanted to have a debate with Roland Martin. Roland Martin loves talking and loves attention from anybody. Probably was down in Florida, offered himself up to Patrick Bet David, because that, that's Roland's job. Go pick fights with people that agree, disagree with uh, the left, defund the police, any, anything the Democratic Party is promoting, it's Roland's job to go pick a fight with them and then use all the tactics they trained him in and uh, deflection and distraction and filibustering and to use all those taxes. And then you get a nice little clip out of it rolling. It looks like I took on so-and-so and look how I mistreated him or blasted them, blah, blah, blah. But so I think Patrick Bay David wanted to have an argument with Roland, knew that as a non-black person, there was some risk 
end debating a race baiting clown like Roland, because Roland will quickly go to, oh, you ain't black, so shut up. And so Patrick Bad David thought, oh, I got Jason Whitlock. I'll have him go into the ring and fight with Roland, and I'll stay out of it. I'll just referee the fight between Roland and Jason, and I will lean the fight Jason's direction through my refereeing, and Jason will be good with that because, you know, Jason's like me. He doesn't really care about truth. He just wants to be popular. He just wants to have viral videos and whatnot. And that's not me. The, 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 I actually do care about honest engagement and, and discussion. And I honestly, I'm not afraid of it. As again, I invited Roland to my home, sat down with him for two hours, gave him all the time in the world, dealt with the fact that he wasn't there to interview me or hear me out. I, I did that four or five years ago. Roland's not honest. He's not a serious person. He's filled with feminine energy. I don't want to wrestle with the male version of Joy Reid and Lizzo. No interest in it. Moved on from that. Patrick McDavid, I think, initially didn't want to take the risk. I walk out and Patrick Bet Davis says, oh, I got to do it. I'll do it. He has his show today. It's, I, 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 if he's satisfied with that, if he enjoyed that, thinks his audience was edified by that, that train wreck of rolling, yelling and screaming and over talking and sidestepping every question. I don't think that uh, promotes understanding. I think it promotes division. I, 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 I don't, I almost think virtually all political debate, political debate is, is, is dishonest at this point and isn't really intended to lead to a higher understanding. And that's why I don't like really engaging in political debate, I try to promote spiritual enlightenment, enlightenment about Christianity, enlightenment about Jesus Christ, enlightenment about the role that the Bible spells out for men. I believe that is the fertile territory to have discussions to bring people together, to inspire men to live better lives. And if we do that, then we have a chance at improving society. But debating Roland Martin about politics, there's no win there for anybody. There's no understanding given. Roland Martin took Patrick Bet David on the merry-go-round, Roland Martin takes everybody on. He's just gonna go from switching topic to topic to topic. Here, talk about this. Here, talk about this. Here, talk about this. And these are, talk about things that only I know at this time. Let me tell you a story about what happened with Republican politicians in Illinois and blah, blah, blah. And Patrick Beck Davis, Beck Davis sitting there going, he's unpacking a story about Republican politicians in Illinois that wasn't some major national story that I'm familiar with in real time. How can I engage or debate? And he just kept doing it. He went from state to state to state to all these examples to examples. And again, there's, there's no way to debate a guy about all that stuff unless you know every piece of minutia inside Roland Martin's head because he's in control of the narrative. It's, it's a very slick tactic. And he, again, when, when someone's telling you some story about what happened to them in kindergarten, how can you debate them on that? You weren't there. You can't talk to the kindergarten teacher. You have no idea if it's real or not. It's just some guy defining a conversation 
that only he can engage in. He's mostly having a conversation with himself. And so I think Patrick Bay David was smart enough to realize how slick Roland was. And was like, hey, let me bring in a ringer. Let me bring in Jason Whitlock and, and he'll do the fighting for me. And, and he wanted it so bad, he was willing to pay me cash money or I don't cash. I, I don't know, because I would have only someone this dishonest. The only thing they could bring me is a briefcase of cash. I, the check would bounce. This is a dishonest person. We, we've, we've met on a foundation of dishonesty. I, I don't believe anything that comes out of your mouth. And so I, I do think his motivation wasn't all bad. I think it was cowardly. I think it was dishonest. But he wanted someone to beat up Roland Martin. And if, if, if I don't want to play uh, the race card on Patrick Bet David. But I, I would be interested to know, did he do this to Jordan Peterson? D d does he do this to his other guest, what he tried to do to me? D does he invite them down under false pretenses? Did Jordan Peterson have to back out of a debate with Roland Martin to be interviewed on his show? Would he, would you invite Tucker Carlson down there? Glenn Beck? Hey, we want to come down and interview you, Glenn Beck. And then when he gets down there, but first we want you to, or not, not first, but, or, you know, when you get down there, we'd actually like for you to debate Michael Eric Dyson or one of the, or Joy Reid or one of these other race hustlers. Do this for my entertainment and pleasure. I've given you a, flee plane ride down to South Florida. I've done you a favor. What, is, is that how you operate, Patrick? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so beneath a level of respect and courtesy and honesty that you're comfortable treating me that way? It, it, I, I, and I have no idea what deal he cut with Roland Martin, maybe Roland Martin knew he was coming down there to debate. Uh, they put it out as there was a heated debate over critical race theory. That's how they put the video out today. Yesterday, they were promoting it as a debate about police reform or criminal justice reform. I don't know what pretense he invited Roland there. Roland was, I think, already going to be in Florida. I, I don't know. But why there was an attempt to rope me into that BS. Why Patrick Bet David seemed to think that little of me. And again, maybe this is my own arrogance. Again, I didn't, I told you, I didn't know where this conversation was going to go, but I was offended. I would never treat anybody that way. There's never been anybody in my entire media career that I've ever tried to sneak attack. I would call people and tell them straight up, hey man, I want to give you a chance to respond to this because I'm going to criticize you in my column tomorrow in the Kansas City Star. I want you to, here's my angle. And so here's the questions I want you to ask. Or I want to ask you. I, I, I don't, I never, ever try to stab anyone in the back. I wouldn't stab the devil in the back. I'd stab him directly in his heart if he had one. There's, there's just no, I find it unmanly to attack someone in any type of sneak attack way. It gets me into trouble dealing directly with people, having uncomfortable conversations with people. It gets me into trouble. It got me into trouble at ESPN because I tried to deal with everybody in a straightforward fashion. Oh, this here isn't good enough. This is how it needs to improve. And there are people that uh, can't stand criticism, melt at the sign of criticism, always have an accusation that any criticism is coming from a bad place. I don't believe that. But I, 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 I just, I just don't believe 
in a sneak attack. And so this show <clears throat> and, and what we're trying to do in April with the roll call event in Nashville is about trying to remind men that we have a responsibility in this world given to us by God. We have to submit to Christ and then try to engage with women and children. And after we have submitted, and there are people trying to disrupt this natural order. And that's why I want you guys to watch Third Adam 3. Spencer Smith's going to be here tomorrow. And he's going to talk about this divine feminine energy and why men are so out of character. And they don't even realize Patrick Bet David has no idea that his involvement with uh, Roland Martin caused him to slip into female behavior. Because he involved himself with Roland Martin, oh, well, let me be dishonest and disingenuous to Jason Whitlock. Th that's what happened. Roland Martin's caught up in his feminine energy. He sucked Patrick Bet David into feminine energy. And then all of a sudden, that, that feminine energy got down to me and I said, not today, devil. I'm not playing this game. I'm out. I'm going to fly back to Nashville, get with my audience, do my show, and try to forget that this even happened. But again, that's why I was saying I had questions like, should I just move on and discuss Kyrie Irving? Job ja Morant, the Grammys, the State of the Union Address? Or should I unpack this and try to use it? And, and again, it'll sound like I've done this just to beat these guys up. I really haven't because they're on a journey just like the rest of us. They can change course no different than I change course, than you change course. It's not over for them, but I, I did want to call all of this out, all of this behavior out, because it needs to be called out. Men need to be reminded there was a time when our word actually meant something. And we tried to treat other men of honor with honor and honesty. Now, Everybody's good with lying. And, 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 and this is why I, being a conservative is the most irrelevant distinction known to man. Being a conservative will not save America, will not save you, will not send this country a better direction. Just because conservatives are slightly by a hair better than liberals. And I know that's offensive to many of you. But there's a better C word, a far superior C word. Are you a Christian? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior? Are you willing to submit to his will and his way of doing things? If you're not, and you're just a conservative, you're going to fall to divine feminine energy. You're going to get in line. They're all getting in line, whether conservative or liberal. They're all getting into line because that's who they answer to, politics. Politics is not going to save us, not going to send America a better direction. I, as best I can tell from my limited research, uh, and, and, and I had a very limited experience with Patrick McDavid, he's a good guy. 
He probably fits the standard of a conservative. Soon as he's given an opportunity to lie, to do something that benefits him, what did he do? Because he's not standing on anything. He's not standing on anything real. Being a conservative doesn't dictate that you not lie, that you treat other men with honor and respect. Being a conservative doesn't demand that. God does. That's, I could rattle off the names of other cons conservatives. No problem lying when it comes to money and it comes to doing something that serves them. I, I, I people get upset with me when I tell, I don't, 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 don't call me a conservative. Cause I, I'm not, I'm a Christian. And, and we engage in political conversation here. And, and I certainly, have a preference politically. But that's just a, I have a belief in Christ and in Christianity and its ability to, to change and make men actually stand for something. Pulling that Republican lever doesn't make you stand for something. You will fold without God. I see it every day. I saw it in myself. It, there's a bunch of things that God prevents me from doing that being a conservative won't. I, I would tonight. I'd be at a strip club if all I was was a conservative. I'd be out in Vegas every weekend. I'd still be living in L.A. Supposed to get to Delano. I talk too much. I pulled a Roland Martin. It's not gonna happen. My sore, my throat is sore. I haven't drank enough water. Seems like I got a runny. And that's the you know you get on these planes, you start changing uh, atmosphere and weather. I prom if I got a sore throat tomorrow and I struggle to do this show, I'm gonna be even more mad at Patrick, Bet, David, and and. Roly Martin, Lizzo, <laughs> and yes, I know I'm fat, but I ain't Lizzo. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. We are living, get back. We are receiving all the seeds when we all want to be free. We want freedom. I just want. I wanna be, I just want